Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, I'm actually helping out a friend of mine. Um, he actually has an Asteroids that the monitor does not work on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shotgun it because I don't have a scope to connect to it, but I'm pretty sure that the board's fine, it's playing blind. So um, I'm not gonna rebuild the HV cage, which I really should do. I should open it up and kind of rebuild that. But I do have a cap kit for the monitor. Um, I do have the transistors as well. We're gonna go ahead and swap it all out in this video. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right guys, so I have everything set here. Um, I'm not gonna bother cleaning anything. Um, it's pretty it's pretty okay, I'm not gonna mess with it at all. But I am gonna change these two big blues out. Um, I go to arcadepartsandrepair.com and actually I have the bag here with all the stuff in it. And um, he suggested that uh, all his customers kind of use these right here. They're the same, they're 7200 UF at 50 volts and they'll replace those. And you know, people said that they've been fine. So I'm gonna use these right here. And I also got some transistors. So the guy replaced these four on the side, which you can't see. I'll show you those in a second. But these two right here are actually hidden right back here. They're actually behind here. There's one here and one on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and swap those out. Um, I have to go ahead and get my paste. I have my, uh, my heat sink paste somewhere. I have to see where it is, but I'll grab it in a second. And then we have, of course, the cap kit. This one's the Mega Deluxe cap kit. It's the Electrohome G5801. So it's a G05 uh, that comes in different models. Uh, this one here, you basically go by the serial number and you could tell this one has a separate board over here. So this one is the 801, but they do have the 802 and he does have those kits and stuff like that. But uh, this is the one for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cap that. So I have the cap kit, I have the transistors, which I'll put on the side. And I also have these two big blues. And then I also have just in case, I don't think I'll need it, but I have the mica. That's a TO3 transistor. It's the mica that goes in between. It's the kind of like the insulation. And um, he also, I grabbed this as well. It's his AR. This was getting proper voltage everywhere. So I think it's fine, but I'm just gonna double check the connectors. Maybe I'll reflow them on the back. Uh, but I think it doesn't need a rebuild. It looks like it's pretty good. It looks like someone may have done it because these look pretty new here. So it's possible that somebody swapped it out, you know, with a, with a new version or whatever. Let's go ahead and just take it out with the driver. There's that one there. That one there. And we had already discharged this monitor, but I'm going to do it again just in case. Contrary to popular belief, I should say, you can discharge this with a screwdriver. It's totally false. People say it'll ruin it. I believe the only way you can ruin it is if it's on, uh, where it has um, one of the transistors can actually get messed up. Uh, but if it's off, it's no, in no danger to uh, get messed up. I actually asked um, Mr. Jason Cobb, he's the arcade vector king in my opinion, and he said it's fine, you could totally do it. I do have a probe where I can do it, but I'm gonna just discharge it normal. It should be fine, I don't think it's in any danger. So I'm gonna go grab that. I took those out right there, but I'm gonna grab it just to discharge it again, just in case, but I'm pretty sure it's fine. Okay, so I grabbed it over here. I'm just gonna put it anywhere on the chassis. Let me just, uh, I'll actually put this side on the chassis here. Doesn't matter where. And then this side fits really good. I'm gonna put my hand in my pocket, stick it on the suction cup and it should be fine. There we go. Popped it off, totally fine. Disconnected this. So those three are out and there we go. And you'll hear my son, he's in the background actually playing uh, Smash TV and playing games down here. He's just chilling out while I do some work. And this you kind of have to lift up. So I'm gonna lift it and pull it out. And that's it. So this is what we're gonna recap. Uh, we're also going to, you know, change out these. Um, we're gonna, actually, we're gonna recap what's on the side. And we're gonna change these out. The fuses look okay and everything. We already tested them. And these are the transistors that we're gonna take out and change out. Should be really easy. It's solderless, just screws. Uh, let me see if I can grab that. I gotta figure out how to take that out here. And I'm going to turn this like that, kind of at an angle so you can see. But these are the four transistors I'm talking about. He replaced all four of these. And it still didn't uh, work for him. So let's go ahead and just remove all this. And we'll just take it out and we'll be able to cap it. So there's this one down here. 
so and this one they have like these little tabs that you got to press down on to get them out all right and then to get it out i believe it's one two three and then it should come out so let's use my driving tool for that again it's one two and this one right over here i just got to get in there Three. All right, so the shorter ones go to here, the longer ones go to the other one. And we'll kind of just lift it out. And that's it. So now we can put this away, put this on the floor. And again, this is the HV stuff. This actually comes off where you can get in there and change stuff out. I might take a peek at that off camera after the episode, but for now, I'm really worried about just doing this here. So here's one, and then we'll get to that other one later, and then we'll take this right here. So I think I'm gonna tackle these first. I've never changed out uh, big blues. It should be easy, but I know with these, you, have to, might, you may have to solder them in. Uh, it does say positive and negative, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and switch it out. But he said they work for people, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So let me set it up. I'll set up the camera, have a better angle, and we'll uh, tackle this. All right, so I got my tools here and I'm going to have my soldering thing kind of heating up. And I think for these, I think I just have to use the driver that I've been using. It has like these bolts right here, kind of holds them in place. And that looks like it came out. And this one too. That's kind of like that. And then these have a regular screwdriver there, so I'm gonna see if I can grab one. Yep, this should do it right here. There's one, there's the other. So I gotta figure out how to get these on there Maybe I, what I will do is I will not solder them. There might be a way to kind of twist them around and get them on there. Uh, I'm gonna take them both out actually first. Um, but these definitely need to be swapped. There you go, so they came right out. And I'm trying to figure out how you figure out positive and negative on these. Oh, it says it right there. So it says it positive and negative it says it on each one so I'm taking these out for now and I guess we won't be needing these brackets so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these back in just so they don't get lost if you want to replace it later with an original part you can it's not gonna be destructive that's fine and then this one right here I'll do the same thing All right, that's good enough. And these here are smaller, so they'll definitely fit in without any issues. And then when it comes to positive and negative, this is positive here, and that's negative right next to it. And then as you know, negative is right here, and the longer one is positive. So it's gonna go in like that. And then I'm guessing what I should do, I mean, I don't wanna solder it in if I don't have to. I wonder if I should, but I was just gonna kind of screw them in, but they can't screw in, that's the problem, because these actually have the threads on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder them in there, and then I'll snip them. But um, I'm gonna keep these on the side just in case. So I'm just kind of saving them here. But ideally, you'd want to get the originals that are in there, but I don't know if anyone sells them. And I'm not sure if you want new old stock stuff. It's been sitting around for like, you know, 30, 40 years. Uh, you know, you probably want new stuff. So I'm just, again, just saving this just to save it. I'll give it to him. He can do what he wants with it. Um, but I'm putting brand new stuff in here, so I think it should be fine. 
And it's not like you're gluing it, you know, you just desolder it, it's fine. Okay, so this here, positive, negative, uh, positive on that side, negative on that side. You can see right there. And I guess the best way to do it would be just to fold them like that. And then uh, basically solder it right on there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me uh, grab my solder and tin it. do this actually I'll bring this on the other side because I want to be able to uh, have the fan suck away all the fumes here cool all right so I'm gonna do this here kind of have that go right on there this one right on there putting a lot and being pretty generous with that. I want a big glob on there. Same thing with this. I'm just going to put a little more here. All right, that's fine. And what I'll do is I'll clip it with some cutters. But in the meantime, let's get this one in here. So negative and positive. So positive goes in this one. Negative goes in that one. Fold that over. Fold it over. I guess I could if I wanted to. I could actually solder it to this right here. I don't think I want to do that though. I'm just going to leave it on the pad itself. Um, but I'm going to bend it in a way where it'll give it some support. So maybe I'll just do it that way like it originally was. And that one right there. All right, so we'll do that. And let's see. If you guys uh, want to comment in the comments, have you guys done this? Have you replaced it with new old stock uh, big blues or did you take this approach here where, you know, you grab the same uh, cap that was rated for this and uh, did it that way? So let me know in the comments. Um, I'm assuming the newer stuff is better, right? You always want the newer stuff in here if possible. But again, I'm, I'm being pretty uh, generous with this solder just to get it on there and kind of put in some big globs on there so it gets full. And then what I'll do is I'll snip it. So let me go ahead. I'm going to get my snips, my side cutters. I think I put them away. Uh, I'll go grab them and I'll just snip those off so it'll be nice and neat. Okay, so we're back. I got my side cutters here, and I'm just going to snip off uh, this right here. It just flew somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where it went. I'm going to grab this one too, snip it. There it is. I'll throw it away. And then same thing with this. Just going to take it, snip it. And it's okay if it's touching this point here because that's actually part of the uh, same trace there. And then this one is not okay touching that, so I'm going to snip that off completely. And there you go. So that's installed. That was pretty easy. It looks kind of weird, <laughs> but these are brand new. And again, you know, just to double check, it has a positive label here. So you know that's the positive side. There's negative, and then same thing. There's a positive right inside there, and it's negative. So this is put on correctly. All right, so let's now go to, let's try the transistors. Let's get these since we have the driver out already. I'm gonna go ahead, you see they're actually inside over here, they're screwed in. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, take these out. So these are the 2N6050, and this one here is a 2N6057. And the equivalents for those are right here. So Arcade Parts and Repair actually suggests that you use the 2N5884 and 2N5886. So I'm going to go ahead and double check which is which. <clears throat> I'll just quickly punch it up on my phone and I'm going to have them here and then we'll figure out which is which and we'll take them out. So, okay, so I grabbed my phone. I'm actually going to do this live while I talk to you. It's just easier in real time. And uh, so I'm searching products and what's cool is that you actually type it in here anywhere on the search bar and it'll find the equivalent on it. So you don't have to go to other sites to do that. That's what I really love about it. So 2N6050. 
050, hit search, and bam, it came up with 2N5884, so that's the lower value, and then the other one is going to be, let's see, and this wasn't on his site, I think, a while ago, and what I did was I emailed him, and he said, yeah, here's your equivalents, you're good to go, and then he put them on his site so anyone else wants to search for it can find it. So this is 6057, this other one. So I'm putting 6057. And according to this, it comes up uh, with 2N5886. So that's it right there. Pops right up. And if you look at the description, it'll actually say, if you click on it, so I'm gonna go in it right now. And in the description here, it says uh, what they are, this is the TO3 package. And then it says the 2N5886 is higher rated. It can be used to replace the following. And it lists them. And it actually lists 2N6057 here, which is right there. So that's what's awesome is that he'll have everything in the description. So if you don't find it in the description, just go to the search. And uh, if you don't find it, email him. And he'll tell you which one will fit. And he'll update his website. He keeps it pretty current. So I swear by him. He, he just has a good site. And, you know, it's, it's stocked well. And he has really good parts. So... Um, he's actually trying to, I know you guys remember this was hanging off my uh, other monitor I did. Um, he's going to see if he can replace this. So I'm going to send this to him. He's going to do some testing on it and see what equivalent can be replaced, you know, this can be replaced with. So I'm going to go ahead and mail it out to him, help him out, and he can help me out. So hopefully uh, he'll have a suitable part and we can kind of save that monitor. I would really like to save it, to be honest, because that frame, you know, works well with that Galaxy and it's made out of wood. It's the original monitor. Um, it's pretty garbage, the monitor, but the mounting system, it's gonna be a pain to try to get something else in there. So uh, anyway, so I'm gonna grab this, just using this to help me get it out here. I'm just trying to get this uh, screw out, there we go. So I'll put that on the side, and then I'm just gonna grab this, and kind of just give it a yank, comes right out. And this only goes in one way, you can see it's kind of offset a little bit. So if you look at it this way, it's centered more towards the top. It's never in the center. So if they do that, so you can't put it in backwards. If you try putting it in backwards, the holes won't line up to put the screws, you see? So it only goes in one way. Uh, this here is probably salvageable, but it is very dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some alcohol, which I have on the side here. I'm just gonna grab a tissue that I have. I ran out of swabs. I used to have swabs and I gotta order good ones. If you guys have suggestions, let me know because people are saying that the ones with the wooden sticks are really durable. Um, I think Mr. Robert Harker, he kind of suggested one and I can't remember what he said, so I gotta email him. <laughs> He's pretty good. He's a great viewer of the channel and uh, helped me out with my outrun where he gave me the, uh, the bottom portion. Yeah, this is pretty old. I'm gonna go ahead, I think, and swap it. I mean, I can get away with this, I guess. I mean, it's okay. It's just a little thinner than I'm normal, than I'm used to having here. Um, but it is cleaning up really good, so I might use it. Looks good. Uh, let me grab another tissue here. So yeah, he got the uh, mat that I have to replace in another episode. I kind of took a rest from outrunning. I felt I was just having too many episodes on that. And you guys were getting bored, so. Switched it up a little bit, but I guess during the winter I can get it, you know, the tea molding done on that. Still have to get tea molding put in on that. And I got to fix the bottom. I have this new stuff that's like Bondo, but it's not as, uh, I guess it's not as fumey. Because uh, Bondo stinks up like crazy. You want to do that outdoors if you can. But obviously I'm down here in the basement, so I want to get something that's, you know, better for the house inside. So I got this other stuff that I'll uh, show you guys, but it's pretty cool. It's like a putty that uh, cures just as good as Bondo, and it's shapeable, and it's really cool. I already tried some of it. Okay, so this one is the 6050, which they said was 5884. So I'm going to take that. You can put it in here like that. You have to put some uh, paste, and then that will fit in there. So let me go ahead while I'm at it. I'll take out the other one. Well, you know what? Before I do that, let me just clean this up a little bit because uh, this stuff is all over and it's nasty, it's dry, and it's gross. 
we'll get it cleaned up really well. We'll put some of that paste that I have in there. I just got to find it. Yeah, that looks good. And then let's take this side out too. So we just have to remember that this is where the higher one goes. There's numbers on them. This is 5886, so that goes on that side. And this one has 5884, which goes on that side. I'll take them both out. Should come out pretty easy. So this is pretty easy stuff to do. If you guys ever have monitors that don't power up, you can always replace this. This is uh, It has usually a transistor and a hot. And they look kind of like this a little bit. Some look different. They'll have be like those little square ones with the three prongs. But these are really simple to take out. You don't really have to know how to solder or anything. They just come right out. And I'll take some of this and clean it up. So that's the key is just cleaning it really well. You don't want to have old stuff in there causing problems. It's, pro it's probably that the fact that it was so old could be giving it problems. So there's that. And then this is the old one, which I'm going to put on the side. We could test them, but I'm not going to bother. Let's put brand new ones in there. And then what did I do with... Oh, here it is. It's actually right there. Super dirty. This is it right here. So I'm just going to take it. You just put alcohol all over it. Cleans it right up. You can reuse them. And it is in good shape. It's just thinner than what I'm used to. And it should work just fine. So I'm going to use it for now. We'll see. I mean, I do have brand new ones right here. They're nice and thick. So... But I might save those to redo his. Because he has other ones on there too. But if these are okay, I'm going to go ahead and recycle these. But you do have to take the paste off. Don't get lazy and just, you know, not clean it and reuse it because you'll end up paying in the long run. You always want to have new stuff on there, new uh, paste. All right, so that's good. Cool. So that'll go on this one and it goes on one way. So let's try that way. Yep, that worked. Cool. All right, so let me get that stuff the compound and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I did find it. I have this here. It's a Dow Corning 340 silicon heat sink compound. And you want to use something like this. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. It's pretty easy to, to order. I ordered like a lifetime supply. Um, it was a little pricey. I'm not sure if it was 20 or 30 bucks, but it lasts forever. This thing will last you. Once you get this, you'll never need a new one. Um, do not use um, heat sink compound from like uh, CPUs, like I'm putting in processors and uh, Intel and all that. Those are conductive and they will totally mess everything up and short it out. So you don't want to use those. You want to use something like this, which is non-conductive. So it's really important. I'll put a link as well. Bob Roberts has a article on it um, where he kind of says, this is what happens if you use it. We had a guy using it once on the forums and uh, we told him, hey man, you shouldn't be doing that because it'll actually cause a short and blow up and fry everything. So uh, yeah, you don't want to use those on these at all. You want to use this stuff right here. So I'll put up proper links in the description and also a link to that article where Bob Roberts talks about it. The real Bob Roberts. So, okay. So we're going to go ahead and put that on there. Um, I also wanted to touch on this too. This is the uh, Aquadog. There was a little bit of Aquadog coming off on the, I noticed on the monitor, it was like a little patch and I kind of just put a little square on it. You basically just open it up, you shake it up. It's like nail polish goes right on. You just paint it right on. This stuff goes a long way. And I kind of patched up um, the Aquadog. The Aquadog is conductive and you need it on the monitor. If you don't have it, if it's missing in places, um, at least I know for rasters, it'll kind of get sparkly and it'll have issues uh, where you see little sparkles while you're playing. Um, so this stuff is really good to have on hand. Um, I'll put a link to, I don't think they have this particular brand anymore, but they do have other stuff. If you just uh, search for Aquadog on Amazon, you'll find it. Uh, but it works really well. So I painted this on on a little patch and I'll show you that later uh, where I painted it on. It's nice and dry. This stuff really stinks though. So it stinks just like nail polish. So uh, you don't want to be around, you know, have well ventilated area when you put it on. But it worked out well for me. So, uh, all right. So let me go ahead and put this on the side. 
I grab the tissue so I can get it ready to wipe my hand off, but you'll see. I just grabbed a little bit of this. And what you want to do is you want to put it on. You don't want to put it directly on here. You want to have it, you know, so it's uh, so it's on this part right here. So you just put it on both sides. Pretty simple to do. You don't need to glob it on there like I just did. Um, I'm going to put it down. And just do this. You probably want to do this like, probably a better idea to put it on a tissue or something. Swipe that up here, just so it won't get messy. But you don't want to put too much on it. You're just going to put enough where you're smeared on. So that amount that I just took should be good for both of them, actually. Let's see if I can take it on here. Yeah, you want it on kind of like that. So I'm going to steal some from there. Put it on. And actually, I still don't have enough. Take a little bit more. This stuff reminds me, if you have kids, it reminds me of Desitin. <laughs> Same consistency. AKA butt cream for your kids when they're babies. All right, so flip it over. And you can't put it down, so I'm just gonna kind of do this. It's gonna get messy. There's no way around that. You know, you just gotta just Slop it on there. Turn it around. Put some on this side. Turn it around. So this is heat compound, right? I think that's what it's called on here. Yep, heat sink compound. So this is for the heat sink. And it kind of connects it to this part here that makes it spread. So you want a pretty good connection there. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this right on here. And I put it on the right way so it sticks on there. And then I'm gonna take this one. I still have to take the other side here. Put some more stuff on there. I'll just grab a tiny bit more. And again, it does get a little messy, it's fine. It wipes right off. on there pretty good and then I'm gonna drop this one on here and that is also on there really good so I usually do it before I put it on that way it's nice and neat um, and then you take this and you can wipe up so it comes right out see you just gotta make sure you don't touch anything so you'll get it all over but I guess you could wear gloves if you want. I don't. It doesn't really do anything. I don't think it's harmful at all. Just messy. All right. So that looks pretty good. And I got some on here, so I'll just make sure that's... This stuff gets all over. Like, I found stuff <laughs> on pieces of equipment when I was working on it last. Let's throw that out. Okay. So... Close that up. All right. And now, I believe when we were looking at it this way, the lower number went on the left here. So we have 5884 and 5886. Okay. So I'm going to put it on, and it only goes in one way. So it looks like it's, it's favoring this side here. So let's go ahead and put it in that way. See, see if I got this right the first time. Is that wrong? Let me just double check that it's right. Yeah, that looks right. So you put it on and it only goes in, like I said, one way where it won't uh, affect anything. So you'll want to kind of push on that. There we go. It's going to slip in right here on these two points. So they're pretty much the same for monitors. So if you work on other monitors that are raster monitors, they work exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Hold it down. All right. And 
and that's it. It's nice and snug, good to go. All right, let's put this one on. It's facing the top, it's favoring that more. So I'm gonna put this side facing up like this. And see how nice and neat it is when you just put it on first. I'm gonna actually twist it by hand. Yep, now it's in. And then the other side. It's right there. So it can be a little sloppy, it's not it's not gonna do anything. Okay. That side's in, I'm just gonna twist it by hand. One, two, three, and four. Alright, so those are in nice and snug. It's awesome that they're like that. It's good to go. And so let me just straighten this out a little bit. There we go. Alright, so we got that going. These are the older ones. I'll put these on the side. I'll probably clean them up a little later with alcohol just to get them in a bag or something. And I'll put those for now like that. All right, let's go ahead and look at this cap kit. Take it out. Um, I'm just gonna put the caps. Usually I, I kind of organize them a little bit, but I'm not gonna do that in this video because um, you know everything is pretty much there. Sure, it's fine. I'm gonna put that on the side too. That's a tissue, a piece of a tissue, and this one here. So I'm just gonna double check. It looks like Axial. These are Axial. They have like instead of being like the normal ones that you're used to, they they're kind of like that. So it says one UF at 50 volts. So this one I'm just double checking. One UF at 50 volts. One UF at 50 volts. So these are the two Axial that you need, and then 47 at 50 volts. Not to be confused at 470. There's a there's three 470 at 50 volts. This one here is uh, nope, that's not it. 470 at 50. I'm just gonna put it on the side here. 470 at 50. And this looks like the last one here. 470. Yep, at 50. And then they have 4.7. Yep, 4.7 at 250 volts. And then. 47 at 250 volts, that's this one here. Go ahead and remove that. All right, so this is 47. So, you know, don't be confused. I've done cap kits where I messed them up where you can't see the decimal. So it's 4.7, 47, and then 470. So those are all different ones here. So you got three of the 470s, 147, and then one 4.7. And then there should be another one. This is the uh, 47, it looks like, at 250 volts. And then there's another 47 at 50 volts, which is smaller. So we don't want to confuse those either. So he gives pretty good directions. Be sure to install all the parts on the monitor, even though many of the original parts seem to be working fine. Age, humidity, and temperature will cause the value of electrolytic capacitors to change. Uh, installing all of the parts will assure many more years of trouble-free service and that's that's definitely true so uh, it's telling you just make sure you insert it in the right direction there's a positive and negative hole um, axial capacitors generally have a stripe or a strip down the side with a negative symbol uh, in the strip and arrows pointing to the lead that matches the polarity so to see these I know these are you have the longer and the shorter so the longer is positive this is negative and it's also marked on the side negative uh, for the axial ones he's saying that see how it says here it says negative and it's pointing this way so this is a negative lead and then the other one is a positive lead so that's how you determine that so i'll show you a quick close up here Let's see a full focus there uh, but basically it's a negative and it's pointing this way so this is negative right here and that's positive on the other side that's how you determine what's what. Okay, so make sure the game is unplugged, the monitor is discharged before installing, and it says regular PCB, and then deflection amp PCB, and high voltage uh, PCB. Oh, it looks like uh, this might actually include the high voltage. Wow, I didn't realize that, so I might have to take apart the cage. So uh, I don't know what the regulator is versus deflection, but I'm just gonna find out right now, because C102, 
I can see it right there. There's positive and negative. This is the regulator PCB right here. Then you have the deflection amp, I believe, which is this, because that has C506 on there. Let's see. Uh, maybe it, it's not. Let's see, C506. Uh, let's look at these here. What do those say? C805. And 804, C804. Okay, so yeah, this is the deflection amp PCB. I see 804 right here. I could see 805 right there. And then 506, I guess, would be this one right here. Yeah, so that makes sense. There's only three on these. So let's do this one first. We'll put that one on the side. I got my desoldering gun here. I'm just going to take them all out. And it's all labeled. And a lot of times they have glue here. So you'll take the glue and pull it out. Um, you could always do that afterwards, but it, but it's fine. So let's see here. Take these two out. There's one. That one looks like it's falling right out. And you can see some of the adhesive. See how it's caught on there? You just give it a tug and it'll come right out. This one looks like it was pretty... Uh, I don't know if it's leaking, but it looks pretty ugly. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And a lot of times I have a, uh, this is more rubbery, but if you get the harder stuff that's kind of flaky, you can, um, I'm just going to cut it off like that. You can actually take a uh, plastic, they have plastic razor blades, believe it or not. It's meant for artwork and stuff. They're great. If you ever want to scrape off uh, glue and stuff off of, uh, you know, like plastic marquees and stuff like that, it works really well. But I use them to do stuff. I'll show you how they look here. They look like this. They're made of plastic. I got this from um, Amazon, but I got the idea from Rich at this old game. He had said, uh, I think he posted something on Instagram or something. And it's cool because it doesn't mess up your traces on the board. You could scrape away and it won't do anything. Like, you know, if you use this, obviously I just cut them, but if you scrape with this, you can mess up traces on the board. So that looks okay. So I took that one out. I'm gonna take them all out all at once because I know where they go. They're pretty clearly labeled and there's only three, but if you normally do a cap kit, you wanna do one at a time. So let's take this one out here. That one out. Almost, yeah, that one's out pretty much. All right, and then the other one is right here. This Hako has been amazing. Really helps you do cap kits really quick. Um, stuff usually falls right out. In this case, it's a little, everything's glued on. You can see where the glue is, but these are a little bulged too. You definitely want to replace this. This is really old. So let me put that on the side. And you can hear my son in the background. He's playing Outrun. <laughs> He's here just hanging out. We're just doing stuff. He had a little uh, birthday party today. And uh, we did some, uh, he wanted to do it in the arcade. He had a friend over and we had a great time. Let me see if I can grab that. Yeah. Let me take this and it's hard because this won't get in there as well as I want it to. Might have to snip it in half or something. Yeah, might as well get all this stuff out of here. I can't get to it. I'm gonna cut it out. There we go. There's that, and then there's this one here, which I'm just gonna kind of lift up and hold. It's kind of rubbery. Usually it's surprised, usually really hard and brittle. So I'm just cutting that out. And I don't want to scrape there, so I'm gonna scrape with this. Yeah, that looks fine. Like, I can cut it out here. There we go. Yeah, this is a jumper. 
but they put it over. And you can see where it's marked positive, positive, and positive. So you want to put the holes on those sides. So, all right, let's put 805 in there first. So 805, according to this, is... Actually, it's 806 and 804. So 806, yep, and 804. Those are the 470 at 50 volts. So those are the two right here, the bigger ones. So 470 at 50 volts, and positive looks like it goes this way. That's where it's marked. And we'll do that here too. This one's going this way. Don't always assume that because they're on the board, they're facing the same direction. It really depends on how it's built, you know? And then uh, 506. 506 is supposed to be 47 at 250 volts. So 47 at 250 is this one. It's a bigger one. Put that right on there. And then we'll flip it over and solder. And these are staying in there pretty good, so I'm not gonna bend the legs. I'm gonna keep them as is. I'm gonna tin this a little bit. Get it nice so I can flow good. And we're just gonna quickly solder these, so. So these, you know, people complain, like me, when I first laid hands on a vector monitor, it was a 6100. We uh, rebuilt the high voltage uh, thingy on there and uh, we put in that mod, the LV2000 mod. It was at my buddy Jason's house for his Tempest. And before that, I had never touched the, you know, a uh, vector monitor. And that was the first time. And it was really, really simple. Like I was really shocked at how simple it was compared to a uh, raster PCB. You know, vectors, they just come in different parts. So you have like different boards that do different things, but on the uh, vector monitor, everything's kind of built in everywhere onto the actual PCB. So it's a little crowded on there. So we're gonna snip this here. Just get them all. I usually try to save those. They're good jumpers if you ever need to jump something for a lifted trace or something. So I'll save these because they're nice and thick. They work great. All right, so that's it. They look really good. So this one's capped, all done. This one's lifted up a little bit, so what I like to do is I'll, I'll push it down and hold it to get each side in there. So right now, there we go. That worked well. All right. Alright, cool. So I'll just take that and snip it a little more. Make sure it doesn't get on the board. And that looks good to me. So that's fully capped. <laughs> Only three on that one. That was pretty easy. Now let's move on to this one. And according to this uh, sheet here, you have uh, 102, 103. This one looks a little janky. So 102 and 103 are gonna be one UF. They're these here, the axial ones. And I think someone, instead of putting the axial, they actually put in replacement, um, um, gosh, I forgot what they're called, but they're the normal caps <laughs> that look like this, you know? So this one, if you look at it, it's pretty, pretty weird. You see that right and pointing right there? It kind of has like this little wire attached to it. I'm going to try to get it out whole when I desolder it so you can kind of see what's going on. But I'm going to go ahead and desolder this right here. Let's see which one it is. Now that's the one next to it. So it's definitely this one right here. Let's see if I can get to it. There's that one and the one next to it. I actually need to take out both. So... Too. All right. So I'm going to use this to grab it. I really don't have my pliers with me here. But check this out. Look how janky this was. Somebody actually had it in here. It wouldn't reach. So they jerry-rigged. Can you see that? <laughs> they jerry-rigged a wire onto there. 
Um, yeah, kind of crazy. Uh, but whatever, whatever works, I guess. But uh, so positive is that way. This is negative, and that's positive, and that's negative. I wonder if they did it wrong. Because these are they supposed to be touching? They're on the same plane. It says positive and negative. It almost seems like this is mislabeled because it shouldn't be positive. They should both be sharing the same negative here. So I think it's mislabeled. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is uh, there's positive and negative right here. And this was in, I believe, this way. So that would have been negative and positive. And that's positive. Yeah, so they did have it in there, right? But this is mislabeled. It says positive is supposed to be on that side and negative on the other side for both. But when you flip it over, you can see it's clear that they share the same um, terminal here. So which is positive and which is negative? So hmm, negative, positive, and then positive, negative. And then this, I'm going to look at other stuff to see. Sometimes when it shares the same one, can tell what it is. This is sharing that one. And that's just the resistor, so there's no way of telling. <laughs> it's important. You gotta put them in the right way. So I'm gonna do more research because this can be taken either way. So it can be negative and positive, and then positive and negative, but they're on the same thing, so that should not be true. So C103 and C102 need to go in a certain way. So I'm going to put them in with them sharing. Usually when they share the same leg, that's usually, usually negative. And then the fact that they're sharing these two, this is positive actually. It even says it on here. Because these were positive. That's positive. That was negative. Positive and negative. And then this was positive. And that was negative. That's a negative trace. This is a positive trace, which also goes to that one, which is negative. So I, I'm baffled here. I wonder if uh, they had it in wrong. So they had it in this way originally. So I'm going to put it in the way they had it. So minus. So positive was that way. Positive was that way. So negative would be... It looks like positive was towards towards the middle. So negative, since it's pointing that way, would go in this way. And we'll put this one in like that. We'll just bend it. But I'm going to look it up on the schematics. And I think I'm going to do research first before I really commit to this. Because you don't want them in backwards. It could be why this had the issue. That somebody, you know, this clue, the fact that it's like this and really messed up, um, could be a clue as to why it wasn't working in the first place. So, I'm going to not trust this, uh, what it says here. So, negative and positive. I'm not going to solder it in just yet, but I'm just going to bend it there. And I'm going to put this one in. I think it's supposed to go... They're going to share the same. It says negative and positive, but they're connected for sure here. I wonder if I should clean it up a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, they're sharing the same lead. So there's no way they, that has to be wrong. So I bet you they're both positive. So I'm going to put negative on the outside, even though it says positive here. Because they're sharing the same exact uh, pad there. And then what I'll do is I'll uh, double check schematics. And see what's going on. I wonder if he puts a note. Sometimes I'll put a note in there. You know, like, hey, this has this issue. I know he puts a note in there for the G07. The G07 has issues. You know what? I wanted to put that in. I'm going to put it in differently. I'm going to put it in this way. So I want the uh, negative portion to show on top so I know where it's pointing. So I'm just putting that in. Sorry if I'm not really showing you guys, if you can't see. 
<laughs> I know I'm blocking it with my fingers. But I'm trying to get it in those tiny little holes here. Kind of reminds me of needlepoint. There we go. Alright, so that's there. I'm going to push that to this side and push that to that side. So I'm going to double check in a second about those. Um, but I think that's it for this board, right? Alright, so this one's done. I'm just going to research it a little bit. And then... I think it's a good stopping point because I have to do the high voltage uh, PCB, which I got to take out. So I'm going to go ahead and put the monitor up here. I'll show you what I did with the um, Aqua Dog, and then we'll uh, take out the other uh, piece that we need. But that one has these three capacitors right here. Let me put those on the side, one, two, and three. So let me grab that and I'll take it out and we'll continue. Okay, so I repositioned the high voltage cage here so you can see it. Um, usually there's a couple screws here. We took this apart actually at um, the guy's house that I was at. And uh, let's see, is it only that? It might be a third one. Nope, that was it. So that comes off. I'm gonna just keep this all together here. And we need to take this out. And I believe you kind of just take these four screws out and the whole thing comes out. And then we'll get underneath, yeah. So that's the best bet. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this here. Kind of gotta just hold it and pull it out and then this one is disconnected we already connected disconnected the cap and on the side here there's four screws so let's go ahead and remove those this one has a ground in it so just be careful so you'll want to like take it out and you know keep it handy but that goes on there and then this one here two three and the last one I'll hold. Alright. So that one comes out. Just gotta be careful with this one there. Alright. So I'll put that on the side. We'll take this off. And like I said, you know, it's different components. It's pretty cool how everything's in there. Um, I checked the fuse in there, by the way. We thought that's what the reason was. The fuse was fine, everything was good. But we're going to go ahead and swap those caps out. Looks like there's that big one, that smaller one. And then, is it C902? Let me look on this instruction here. So 901, 909, and 910. So that would be, 909 would be this one right here. We'll get a close-up in a second. This is 910, and oh, here's the other one, 901. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. So let me reposition the camera, and uh, we'll come back to this. Okay, so we're back, so I have the high voltage thing right here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, take these out. And they're clearly labeled and they have glue on them too, so I'm gonna kinda take these out. And this one looks like a little more complicated because it has these jumper wires on here. Uh, let's go ahead and take this one out first. This is the one that's simple here. I believe it's these two that I'm holding. That's these two right there, so let's grab them. One. All right, that should do it. Usually they fall out, but since these are kind of glued in, that came out. I'm just keeping an eye on positive and negative, and that's good. This is 4.7 at 160. 4.7 uh, would be right here. Wait, this is 4.7. No, that's 47. 4.7 at... 160 and it's going to be replaced at 4.7 at 250 volts so higher is better you always want to go higher or equal to never under but the microfarads definitely need to be the same so that's 4.7 i'm going to take that bend it slightly so it holds it we'll go ahead and solder that in there grab my solder here we'll grab that Sure, it's good. This one needs a little more. Excellent. All right. And my side cutters I put on the side here. Kind of threw everything to the side when I was putting the monitor up again. And I forgot to show you the Aqua Dog, so I have to remember to do that. <laughs> but I'll do it when we're putting everything back together. Okay, so that's one. Second one we'll do, we'll do this tiny one over here. So 
these two right here. One and two. I'm holding it, but normally it falls right out. So this one is positive and negative, so positive. So that's correctly labeled. This is 47 at 50 volts. And we're gonna be taking it out and putting in uh, 47 at 50 volts. Yep. So I'm gonna put it in right there. Pretty simple. And this a little bit. Solder this in there. All right. We'll take my cutters. Okay. You don't want to cut or cut the uh, solder, by the way. You want to cut right above it. So definitely do not want to cut the solder when you're doing this. Just be careful. So this one here looks like it's jumpered. Uh, there's two. There's one, two. I'm looking at it. Uh, oh, maybe not. It looks like it might bypass that. Might be around. I might have to get around that somehow. Uh, by bending the wires to get around it. But it looks like it's these two right there. So let me see if I can go ahead and do that. Slip in. It's hard to get to it. I just don't want to touch the wire. Because this will melt the wire. Alright, I think I got it. Let's see. And it's glued in too, so... Let's see, did I get it? There's one that's loose. That one's not quite loose yet. loose but that one's not let's see let me double check here okay so they're both moving in there the only thing that's preventing me from taking it out is that glue that's all over it right in there see that and I'm just gonna grab it right here like that it's like pulling a tooth and just pull straight up Yep, it slipped right out. It has all that rubber stuff. So this is 470 at 50 volts. And we're putting in 470 at 50 volts. It matches. So, yeah, see all that? Can you see that? That's what was preventing all my uh, stuff right there from coming out. It has, like, tons of glue all over it. So I'm going to try to get it out by cutting it out. Because it was pretty much a pain to take out here. Well, let me try using these. It's just kind of rubbery. There we go. So there's some. There's another. Looks like rubber cement, to be honest. Let's see if I can get in there. These now. Most of it's coming out. I just had to cut it out. But if you can imagine rubber cement, that's exactly how this feels. It's kind of rubbery. All right, I think that's good enough. That's not interfering with anything. So positive and negative is marked. And it's there too. So I'm going to take the new one, which I think I put on the side. Oh, here it is. So positive and negative. All right, and we'll get it here so I can get, I'm trying to figure out how to get my soldering iron in there without uh, burning up the other wires. So there it is, let me just get this at a good angle and uh, try to get in there without messing things up. All right, I think I got it. All right, there's one. And there's the other. Cool. Let's snip these in. One, two.
Okay, so I have the monitor here and I'm gonna show you what I did. I'm gonna zoom in on it a little bit. Um, you see that little square patch right there? That's the Aquadog. The Aquadog is actually on the monitor and that whole patch was missing. Um, you know, it needs to be on there, it's painted on. So I just took this stuff here. This is a nail polish uh, sized um, Aquadog and I was able to just brush like a little square right there and covered it up and it, it came out great. So it dried nicely. It took two seconds to do and I restored, you know, the whole thing. You can see if I zoom out that it's kind of on. You can see where it ends. See how it's over here and it's not on this portion over here. It's just kind of painted on that side. So, um, and also on this side over here. So yeah, so that's how it is. And I just put it on there because it was totally missing and uh, I just wanted to restore it on there. So quick little patch job. I figured since I had it, why not? I might as well do it. So uh, let's go ahead and continue here. We're gonna flip this around and I can kind of turn it here where we can see. And this is all garbage. This is all the cement that I took off. and kind of put that on the side. But we're turning this here. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this uh, HV cage back on. It's right here. And it goes on this way. And let me uh, just slip, I think that's where it goes right there, right? Yeah, it went through there and then came up here. So these are the shorter ones. I'm just gonna do it by hand at first just to get these in there. And that one's not cooperating, let me try a different one. It's not threading like I want it to. There we go. And then these should go right in there. Hopefully, yeah, that one's having trouble threading. And then this one has that little uh, washer on there, which keeps this on there. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna just tighten these up here. I'll tighten that by hand. And then this one, oh, there we go. Cool, so that's on there, nice. Um, can't forget, if you do disconnect this over here, there's like a ground on the bottom over here. You'll wanna snap that in and then snap this one on. And I could have reflowed, I should have reflowed the connectors on that actually. I wonder if I should do that. You know what, let me go ahead and do that. I'll do that off camera, and then I'll come back to here where I'm putting this in there. Okay guys, so I have all this. I actually um, just reflowed everything. What I did was, um, any connector that you have here, it has a tendency to shake and stuff, so that's usually what has cracks on them. This was all fine. Um, we did the test points here. Like you can see there's ground, and then we have the 10.3 volts DC, and then there's five volts DC right here. Um, and everything else tested fine. Um, I didn't go ahead and change these right here because like I said, we were getting the proper voltage. This thing was working fine. So there was no issues, really the monitor. And these caps look pretty new. It looks like someone swapped these two, these here, maybe the diode, um, you know, and maybe this here uh, because it was soldered in. So what I did is I just flipped it over, went to these actual points and reflowed those, reflowed the you know, those just for safety and reflowed the connectors on the back as well. I did this one here, I did this one here, and I did this one right there. So all reflowed, good to go. Um, I also did this while I was at it because that's the main reason I wanted to do. Um, but I took uh, this and just reflowed. There's a connector here for grounds, which I reflowed. And I just reflowed this connector right here, which uh, could be shaken up, but nothing was cracked. But anyway, I did one, two, three, four, five of them here. And then I looked around and did a couple things here and there that I thought looked a little sketchy. Uh, so this one is pretty good. So I think we're okay with that. So let's go ahead and put this together. I'll change angles and we'll pop this back in and uh, you know, um, pop all the other parts in. And by then I'll tell you whether, um, you know, what orientation this is really supposed to be in before I put it in. Okay guys, so I almost forgot. I actually removed this again. I forgot to reflow all this stuff here. So I just went in the back, refloated. it. Um, looks really good. Cleaned it up with some alcohol and cotton swabs. And uh, this is ready to go. This has been recapped and all these connectors here have been reflowed just in case. And then last but not least, I confirmed here that um, these actually 
do. Um, I, I kind of had a suspicion that maybe they were like in series or something, which they definitely are. So it has positive on one side and negative on the other, and then positive and negative, although they do share the same um, solder point, which is right here. Um, you do want them to be in series and to be, you know, um, sharing positive and negative here because it says positive there, negative, and then positive and negative. So you have a positive on this side and negative on this side sharing the same thing because it is in series, which changes the value of these uh, two. I can't remember exactly what it does, but it makes it, I think, uh, either more or less. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is. Uh, but anyway, they are in series. It's supposed to be like that. I've encountered those before where people like actually twist uh, two together and then put it on um, a board. I can't remember what board I did that had that, but I did have one. And this is correct um, now that you can see that negative is to the left and positive is to the right. And that's where the arrow is pointing. It's pointing this way. And again, it's pointing that way. So it's positive, negative, positive, negative. If you are concerned about that, that's the way you got to do it. So again, positive on this side, negative, and then positive, and then negative, And it worked out fine. Um, I left these on. I could have taken these off. You just take these two little screws off, uh, these uh, nuts actually, and you could remove the whole thing. But in case he wants to add it later, I don't want to have him like lose this piece. And it doesn't, it's harmless for it to be there. So I just left them on there. Uh, so it's fine. And I soldered them on the other side. So there you go. Um, everything seems to be good. Um, I'm trying to remember. I reflowed this one. I wonder if I should reflow. I think I did. But I should just in case. Let me go ahead and reflow this connector right here. Uh, just in case, you know, you do wiggle it to take it out. And then uh, that should be it. But I'm pretty sure I did reflow that. But anyway, I'll double check. So let's go ahead. We'll uh, switch angles. I'll reflow this if I need to. And then we'll um, put it in the monitor itself. Okay, guys. So I popped this back in. Um, I actually ordered a couple parts just in case. I ordered a bridge rectifier. It's like this square piece that they say notoriously goes wrong on this thing. I'm going to leave it for now. I'm going to order the part. We're going to try it. If it doesn't work, um, I'm going to quickly just solder it on and see if that corrects the problem. There's also some transistors here that I ordered. There's this one here and there's one on the opposite side on this side. Uh, I ordered those as well. So hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't, at least I'll have those parts uh, available to swap. Um, I didn't feel like desoldering it and testing them. So I'm just going to shock it at this point, but it should be fine. We'll see. And I'm going to go ahead and stick this back in. Um, I believe, I'm trying to figure out which way it goes in. I know the holes have to line up. Uh, nope, it looks like that's backwards. And we have the contrast and the brightness. Actually, that goes over here. I'm, I'm like totally putting it in the wrong spot. And there we go. So that's in there. Uh, let me go ahead and get my driver. Put it in there. There's three total. There's, let's see, there's that one. And then I know this one is longer in the center here. And let me put that on so I can get it in there without having to hold it. Almost. <laughs> Doesn't want to go in. There, that should do it. I feel it in there now. All right, so that one's in there. I'm just going to connect all this stuff. Uh, there's that one. This one goes in. They're all keyed, so you can't put them in wrong. This one, I believe, goes up here. There's another connector. Where did that go? I can't remember. It's hard to see at this angle. Oh, here we go. It's actually right on top here. And then, I believe this one goes, I want to say right here. Okay, and then this one that's not populated actually goes down there to the actual power to the arcade cabinet. And then this one gets put on here. And I wanted to show you this real quick. Um, 
I forgot to show you guys, you should always test when you put new stuff in, like I just put those in. You should set this to continuity, which mine is right now. And you'll see. And you want to make sure that this is not touching the metal. And that's what that insulator does. If it's touching and you hear a sound similar to this, that's a problem. But we're putting it on the thing and it's not making contact. I tested this one as well. It's fine. So these are good. And just for giggles, I'm actually going to test this one over here. These are fine. Looks like he installed them okay. So I'm not going to bother reinstalling those. He swapped those out. And he actually swapped them out thinking that that would take care of the problem. But then I told him, I said, hey, you know, there's some back here hidden, which you don't really see because it's in this way. So, uh, yeah, he missed those. <laughs> so I just put those in for him. And let's see, I'm going to move this over. Let's see, I'm going to put that on just like that. And then I'll slip this in right here. And that should do it right there. So you got one. You got two. And you got the third one here. I'll just quickly pop that in there. I should be able to get it from here. Let's put this one in first. All right, now this one. And of course, this one right here. Awesome. So that's all in there. I'm going to hook up this connector. And uh, I guess that's it. So at this point, I tested the fuses. I reflowed that. So when, once we put it back on, we're going to put this back in. That's the power. And then, of course, this other one over here, which is the, uh, I believe that's just the connector for the, uh, the actual board. It goes right to there. And, uh, and I think that's good. So hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't work, we're going to go ahead and swap out the um, voltage regulator, which is, uh, is it? No, it's sorry. It's the bridge rectifier. That's like a little square piece that goes in there. Um, and then, uh, actually, I can take it off to show you guys. It's really quick. It's just these two right here. And, oh, you know what? It's not in here. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm thinking, guys. <laughs> it's late. Um, it's actually on that piece down there, which you see. So, let me just double check something. Yeah, so the bridge rectifier is this piece right here. It's right down there. Um, and it's like basically four, there's four solder points on the bottom. And essentially it's just diodes all connected together. So that may need replacing because at DB100, that's the location on the board, they said that's very notorious for that to happen, uh, for that to go out. So I ordered that piece, it's on order. Um, we'll try it, we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, I'll swap that out. Or like I said, I can swap out this um, transistor here and that one over there and see if it works. So those are the only two that I didn't do, uh, but I'll have them on hand just in case. Okay guys, that about does it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, this is something really simple you can do. Um, I actually really like working on vector monitors because they're separate components. Like you have that, this, this deflection board, you know, the HV stuff. Um, it's just amazing that um, it's so simple and um, hopefully this will work out. Uh, but again, I figured I'd take you guys along for the journey. This is something I was just gonna work on on my own and just knock it out. Uh, but I figured why not, we'll just film it. We'll just kind of get it out there. That way if people have any questions on how to do it, this is my first black and white monitor that I worked on, um, but I'm confident because I've worked on other stuff where I had to replace transistors and stuff. So I'm pretty familiar with it. it seemed pretty simple. Okay, guys, so um, don't forget to subscribe. You guys have been awesome with that. Uh, pass it on to your friends and stuff. I know there's a lot of people here who, um, there's a lot of views on it, but they're not subscribed. I can tell. I look at the all stats and everything. So if you're not subscribed, consider doing it today. I have tons of videos I try to do every week on Fridays. And um, also, I'm on Twitter, so at Dell's Arcade. You can find me there while I'll post pictures about stuff I'm working on. Like, this is going to be definitely up. I'll take a picture of this, and I'm working on it uh, for a future episode. And then you guys can kind of get ahead, in, uh, ahead on what I'm doing and, uh, you know, just a little inside look on everything. I'm on Instagram as well. And, of course, you know, if you guys want to support the channel, um, there's T-shirts out. I'm probably going to have some color ones um, in the fall. Right now I have the black and white versions, which are pretty awesome. You can get different colored shirts, like um, 
My significant other actually has a purple version of the shirt. I'll actually get it real quick so you guys can check it out. So yeah, this is it. This is one of the shirts that I offer. It's the, I call it the black and white version, which just has the logo on it. It has the Luzinals Arcade. And this is a uh, cut for a female. So she loves it. She wears it all the time. I actually stole it just for this video to show you guys. Uh, but anyway, it does help support the channel. I can buy new equipment. I'm actually going to buy probably another wireless mic. I'll uh, still so have two. That way if I go like for, um, I want to do a lot more um, traveling when it comes to arcade tours and stuff. Like I go uh, to Richie Knuckles and stuff. It was kind of a pain because I had a wired mic on me while he had the wireless on. But I want to get another one so that we can both have wireless on us. We can walk around. I can even maybe get a third person to like shoot for us and we can just walk around. Because uh, I want to do... Um, Kind of like a warehouse raid where we go in his trailers and we check out what he has and all the rare stuff so that'd be a really cool episode and you know since i work in new jersey out there i'm right near him so um you know i'll just stop by and do that video so yeah so it does help out when you fund the channel i'm also going to do some more live stuff you can do super chat there and stuff uh but as far as everything else i'm really grateful that you guys are doing that i love this hobby you know, I'm super tired. It's really late. I try to find the time for this. So every week I pump out videos for you guys, even though it's really labor intensive. You know, I do this because I love the hobby, not really because I'm making any money. But, um, you know, I do spend out of pocket stuff to do stuff. And I just appreciate when you guys support it as well. So buy a t-shirt, show off, show people that this channel is awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, again, like I said, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. And um, I guess that about does it for this episode. And we'll see you in the next one. So take care.